Amen. We want to thank God for such a powerful message that we have heard in the morning and powerful singing that we have also heard uh, and that we are also hearing. What does the church say? Amen. It's been a high Sabbath. Amen. Amen. Of course, we all remember that story of that robbery that happened in that bus going to Victoria Falls. And in that bus, you remember there was a priest. And as the robber was going with the gun, collecting valuable stuff from the passengers, the, the priest came to the rescue, kicked the gun, took the gun, and the whole bus went into celebration because at least the priest had the gun. And they assumed and presumed that they were going to get their property back. But the priest said, no, 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 no. We are still playing the same music. Continue to give me the valuables. And he went in to continue collecting the valuables. And I'm also doing like the priest this afternoon. I've got the gun now, and we are going together with presumption and assumption. So we're talking in the morning, and of course we're debating on how humble Elder Tagre is. Now, not, the debate is not that he's not humble. The debate is on how. So we agree that he's humble. But how humble is he? So in the morning, I highlighted that uh, uh, about this. Actually, it is his idea. And as we were talking in the morning, we found that you can actually read the whole Bible using this model of presumption and assumption. The whole Bible. And you'll find that every crisis in the Bible is preceded by presumption and then assumption. So let's look at Genesis chapter 3. I'll just do a rundown so that you can then go and read the Bible. You can even say, if we were at university, I teach at university, we say the Tagwire method, yeah? Because he's the one, we, remember we're talking about it in the morning, yes. It's a model. You can literally read every story in the Bible. Look at what presumption came, what assumptions came, what decisions were made, and what were the consequences. So let's look at Genesis chapter 3, we'll not read. So there's a snake in the garden, and we know, that the snake used to speak. Yeah? Yes. The snake used to speak before being cursed. It was given speech. But we can also go aside and say on Genesis chapter 2, 7, the Bible says, and the Lord God made a garden in the east of Eden, and there he put man. So we know from the Bible that Adam and Eve lived in the eastern suburbs. Okay? In, in the, the, a garden in the east of Eden. So in Eden, eastern suburbs, home for Adam and Eve. And they were given responsibilities. And these responsibilities, Adam's responsibility was to work for his family. Eve's responsibility circled around the home environment. The Bible then says there was a tree in the midst of the garden. That is to say, at the central business district, CBD, that's where the tree of life was. The first thing that then shocks me is Eve is not found in the eastern suburbs. She is found in the central business district. That's where she met with the snake. Okay, I hope you heard what I said. We find Eve at the center of the central business district. And there she has a conversation with the snake at the tree. When she looked at the tree, she presumed that the tree was good for food. And the devil affirmed her presumption. And then she assumed that it was good to make one wise. And when she ate first, she took and gave to Adam also. Now, the first thing that you see with presumption and assumption is where there is presumption and assumption, there is absence of duty. When you presume and assume, you are running away from a certain duty. Eve had no business at the center of the garden. God had given her a field where she would thrive and be a star, which was in the home environment. But she ran away from that duty. At the center of the business district, she was there making deals with the devil. But that duty now 
in the home was neglected. When she took the fruit, she also went and gave to Adam. And when Adam looked at Eve after eating, remember, they were not naked. Before Adam ate, there was no nakedness. <laughs> when Adam looked at Eve, knowing what Eve had done, and knowing what God had said on Genesis 2.17, in the day that you eat it, you shall surely die. So in the mind of Adam, Eve was going to die. So Adam then made also a presumption and then assumed that on that very day, she was going to die. Adam, as the head of the family, was supposed to have a duty not to eat because Adam was not deceived. It's only Eve who was deceived. So Adam then made a decision that followed the presumption and assumption of Eve. And when Adam ate, humanity became creatures of presumption and assumption. From that day, we suffer from presumption and assumption. Only when Ad if Adam had not eaten, history would not be told as we tell history. But Adam decided because he wanted to save Eve. So he is taking the duty that is supposed to be that of God. His duty was to make sure that we don't, humanity does not eat. God only came down when Adam ate. They only became naked when Adam ate. Because Adam had neglected his duty. Presumption and assumption goes ahead of neglected duty. When you presume something and assume something, you are running away from a certain duty. Uh, there is a story that you find in Matthew chapter 26, verse 6. A man throws a party and his name is called Jairus, but he's given another nickname that is called the leper. All right? And Jairus was known for following ladies of the night. And out of his escapades with the ladies of the night, it is believed that as a sign of his sin, he became a leper. One of his victims was a woman called Mary Magdalene. Now this Mary Magdalene, Magdalene now is not a surname. She was a prostitute of a city called Gadala. So she was so famous in Gadala and there were so many Marys. So when people would ask, which Mary are you talking about? That one of Gadala. That's how she then had a surname, Magdalene. So there is Jairus the leper and Mary Magdalene. Both of them are sinners in the same fuck out. <laughs> and then they meet with Jesus. Now, Jesus then heals Simon of his leprosy. In celebrating what Jesus had done for him, he throws a party. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In this party, Amnon, Amnon and the Moabites, had they joined with Israel, they would have conquered the whole of the ancient Near East. But because the Syrians wanted to make sure that the Ammonites and the Moabites and Israelites are never one. So every time we are going to do is we are going to make sure that we sponsor hatred against each other. Imagine Simon knowing that Jesus who had healed me and helped me from my weakness is coming for a party that I'm throwing in. I'll go and invite another sinner to say, Iwe, I've been helped. Yes, Come, he will also help you. Amen. But Simon doesn't do that. Do? Mary now. <laughs> He's excited. <laughs> Mary overhears. Because prostitutes know. Mary overhears that there is a party. She says, wait, Simon's house. What? Who's going there? Jesus. And Mary then says, I'm going. But the house of Simon, he was a big man. They were soldiers armed to the teeth. But because Mary knew how to get in. Thank you. She knew how to get in without being detected. So whilst they were having a party, Jesus is at the center. Everyone is shocked to see Mary there. 
And some are wondering, how did she get in? But Mary knew how to get to Simon's house without being detected. Because she used to, to go there. <laughs> now, but that's not where the story is. The story is now, Simon looks and sees this woman, Mary, touching the feet of Jesus. He is shocked and he says, if this man is a man of God, presumption and assumption. If. But he's the one who has healed him. But he, it doesn't matter. Knowledge doesn't matter. The facts don't matter. You just assume if he is. Forget the healing that he did to me. But if he is. So he is only a man of God if he heals me, not others. So presumption and assumption always find themselves deep down in hearts full of envy and jealousy. <laughs> He's adding that there was also Judas. Yes. Yes. Upon looking at Jesus, right? Receiving Mary at his feet. Right? He looked at Jesus. And he said, How could she waste all the money? Ah, you see now. <laughs> you see your method. You see what your method is doing now. There is another assumption. Because Judas, another sinner, also looks at another sinner and says, That's a waste. That's a waste. But look at what uh, 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 Simon then says. He says, ah, if this man knew the manner of woman that is touching him. So envy and jealousy are found in hearts full of presumption and assumption. But above more, worse off than that is assumption and presumption are human attempt to cover my weakness by uncovering others. So for them not to know that it is me, because we know that Simon was the first man to sleep with Mary, but they don't know. It's only Simon and Mary who know. So for people to focus on Mary's sin, I must make sure that I heighten her sin and minimize mine. So Simon is washing himself using the dirty of Mary. So every time when you presume and assume, many times you are trying to cover yourself by uncovering others. But in the morning we were told, we must cover. 